Oi. Ninety-two degrees. It's beautiful weather. It's sunny. It's bright. You know, God uses the seasons to bring us to a place of sometimes rest, sometimes work, sometimes planting, sometimes sowing, sometimes just enjoying ourselves, sometimes doing the work of the ministry, sometimes taking up your cross and following Him. Sometimes it's not easy, and sometimes it's hard. But you know, every time we could take it to the Lord and look at him and speak our mind and then I think what you'll find is that as you do he doesn't beat you up or chastise you but he'll give you a hug <laughs> that's all I want that's all I ever really get I don't need a whole lot of direction sometimes I just need a hug from him don't you Spurgeon our heart shall rejoice in him. Blessed is the fact that Christians can rejoice even in the deepest distress. Although trouble may surround them, they still sing. And like many birds, they sing best in their cages. The waves may roll over them, but their souls soon rise to the surface and see the light of God's countenance. They have a buoyancy about them which keeps their head always above the water and helps them to sing amid the tempest. God is with me still. To whom shall the glory be given? Oh, to Jesus. It's all by Jesus. Trouble does not necessarily bring consolation with it to the believer, but the presence of the Son of God in the fiery furnace with him fills our hearts with joy. He is sick and suffering, but Jesus visits him and makes his bed for him. He is dying, but the cold and chilly waters of Jordan are gathering about him up to the neck. But Jesus puts his arm around him and cries, Fear not, beloved, to die is to be blessed. The waters of death have their fountainhead in heaven. They are not bitter, but are sweet as nectar, for they flow from the throne of God. As the departing saint wades through the stream, and the billows gather round him, and heart and flesh fail him, the same voice sounds in his ears and says, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. As he nears the borders of the infinite unknown and is almost affrighted to enter the realm of shades, Jesus says, Fear not. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Thus strengthen and console, the believer is not afraid to die. Nay, he is even willing to depart, for since he has seen Jesus as the morning star, he longs to gaze upon him as the sun in his strength. Truly, the presence of Jesus is all the heaven we desire. He is at once the glory of our brightest day and the comfort of our nights. <laughs> I think that's all I've been saying all day is just simply Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's all I ever say is Jesus. You know, and I know the days will come when we will die, you and I, and how we face death today, really, determines a lot of how it shall be tomorrow. For me, having faced death before and been told that I was going to die, there was a resignation, a peace that came over me that was beyond understanding that I didn't fear it. And I didn't have a great animosity towards it. And yet, when I sought the Lord after I was content with dying, <laughs> in typical Jesus style, he said, you shall not die, but you shall declare my works. And I went, wait a minute, <laughs> back up, excuse me, I'm ready to die, I'm told I'm going to die, I'm physically dying. I'm physically depleted, there's no way that I can live, and now you're telling me, Lord, that I'm not going to die? 
But I'm going to declare your works? No! <laughs> I'm ready to go! <laughs> well, let's see. 25 years later, <laughs> I guess, I didn't die. Oh my gosh, it's been that long. And you know, there is a glory to leaving this world behind, and there's a glory to remain. But for me, because I want Jesus more than anything, I really do look forward to leaving the world and all its ways and leaving these days far, far behind. For there is a place I know not where, a man I long to see. I met him every day. <laughs> I've heard his voice. I've heard him say he loves me. And because he does, I just want to go be with him. It is a man love divine. It is something that is so pure and holy, I can't describe it to you. There is a purity about Jesus. There is a tenderness beyond comprehension. There is a breath of filling yourself with the Son of God. That is love. Eternal life.